Welcome back AP Calc students. This is uh, part two of the lesson video for section 10.4, polar coordinates and polar graphs. So I'm going to pick up right where I left off. Um, now I'm going to start covering the calculus piece of this section. The first part was most of the review of how to draw a polar graph and how to use your calculators and how to find zeros and that sort of stuff. Um, now we're going to start worrying about uh, taking derivatives. So when you do this, you have to be really careful. Um, you know, they're very relate, related to um, parametric equations. We can easily derive um, the derivative in polar form if we think of, if we rewrite them in uh, parametric equations. So remember we have x equals r times the cosine of theta and y equals r sine theta. I mean, that's how we find x and y typically. Um, when we're going from um, polar to rectangular, okay? And so if we replace, if you have a function that's defined in polar format, so r equals f of theta, we're going to put that right in for the r here. Okay, so your equation becomes x equals f of theta cosine of theta and y equals f of theta sine theta. Okay, so this would be the parametric form of that polar equation. And the reason that's nice is because then we can derive um, the derivative of the polar equation. And as you know, dy dx, that's what we're going to find, the derivative. And when you're in par parametric form, it's the derivative of y with respect to theta over the derivative of x with respect to theta. Okay, this is, so that's our parametric form of the derivative. Now, when you take the derivative of y with respect to theta, we'll do this top one first. There's my equation I'm going to use. We're going to use the product rule, okay? It's f at theta times sine of theta. So it's the derivative of the first factor, which is f prime at theta times the second factor, plus the first factor, which is f at theta, times the derivative of the second, which is cosine of theta. And then the bottom one, the dy d theta, or excuse me, dx d theta, we'll do the same thing now with this one. Again, we'll use the product rule. It's the derivative of the first factor, which would be f prime at theta times the second, which is cosine at theta, plus the first, which is f at theta, times the derivative of the second, which is negative sine of theta. Okay. And then what that gives us is, it basically gives us our formula. This is the formula you use for um, taking the derivative in polar form. The only thing I'm going to do down here is rewrite that using subtraction. So it would be minus f at theta, sine of theta. But, you know, this formula comes directly from the parametric form of the derivative. Okay. So this is just a recap what I've done. All right. And so now from this theorem, we can make the following observation. So this is the rule, okay, for taking the derivative in polar form. Okay, so if you're taking f at theta, it's f prime at theta times sine of theta plus f at theta times cosine of theta over f prime at theta times cosine of theta minus f at theta sine of theta. Okay, now from this theorem, we can make a couple of observations. Horizontal tangents can be found wherever dy d theta is equal to zero. Just like before, if I want to find the horizontal tangents here, all I have to look for is where dy d theta is zero where the numerator is zero, um, provided that dx d theta is not zero. So we're, you're not dividing by zero. Vertical tangents can be found wherever dx d theta is equal to zero. So that's the denominator, okay, provided that dy d theta is not zero. And if both dy d theta and dx d theta are zero simultaneously, and that means at the same angle, well, no conclusions can be drawn about tangent lines. Okay, so 
this first example, we're going to find the horizontal and vertical tangents to the graph of r equals 3 minus 3 sine theta. So what we're going to do, first of all, is put this in parametric form. Okay, and then we're just going to use the, the parametric form of the derivative. So, again, just start x equals r cosine theta. Okay, so that means x is equal to, now my r is equal to 3 minus 3 th sine theta. And then we're going to multiply that times the cosine of theta. Okay, and you know, however you want to write it, um, we do the distributive property here would be, probably be the wisest thing to do. And then you have minus 3 sine theta cosine theta. And I don't know about you, but it, whenever I see a first power sine times a first power of cosine, I know I can use a double angle formula to simplify that. Okay, I'd have to put, if I want to put a 2 in front of the sine theta cosine theta, I'd need a 1 half out in front of it. Again, please, you know, this is equal to 3. Okay, then I could write this as 3 cosine theta minus 3 halves sine of 2 theta. I could take the 2 sine theta cosine theta and use that trig identity, a double angle formula. All right. And that might be a nice way to do it. I'm thinking about, you know, if I have to take its derivative, that's pretty easy to take the derivative of. This one, not so much. It'd be complicated. I'd have to use the product rule. And I really don't want to go there. I'd rather use the chain rule than the product rule. Okay, um, so we're going to do the next. Same thing with the y now. We're going to rewrite this in parametric form. We know that y is equal to r times the sine of theta. And r is defined to be, in this instance, 3 minus 3 sine theta. Okay, so y is equal to 3 sine theta minus 3 sine squared theta. And that one's going to be pretty easy to take the derivative of, so I'm not too worried about that one. Okay, hopefully so far so good. Let's see what my next screen looks like. I need to do a little erasing here because I'm out of room. Give you a couple seconds here to get that down. Okay, so... I think I'll write those back up here. Okay, so I've got x is equal to my stylus does not write really close to the edges of this thing. Oops, I started writing a y. So we're going to go with 3 cosine theta minus 3 halves sine of 2 theta and my y is equal to 3 sine theta <laughs> minus 3 sine squared theta. There we go. Okay, just so I can remember that because the next thing we're going to have to do we're going to have to take the derivatives now. So now I can take the derivative and I can find, so I have to write them in parametric to find the derivative. Okay, so first thing I'm going to find dx d theta. Actually, maybe we should do dy d theta on top. Let's do dy d theta, dy dx, we know is equal to dy d theta over dx d theta. Okay. So if we take the derivative of y with respect to theta, we're going to get 3 and times the cosine of theta minus, okay, the 2, the, the next term over here, it's going to be minus 6 sine of theta times the cosine of theta. All right, hopefully you can read that okay. All right, then dx d theta, that's going to be negative 3 sine theta. Okay, now here comes the, um, the derivative of this term. Okay, so the derivative, you know, the 3 halves would come out in front. I'm going to have to rewrite this anyway. Okay, so sine of 2 theta would be equal to cosine of 2 theta times 2. And so we end up with...
let's see, I'm going to write this as 3 cosine theta. Again, here I've got sine theta times cosine of theta. We can split out a 2 there. That's 3 sine 2 theta. Okay, and over here we're going to have negative, <coughs> excuse me, negative 3 sine theta minus 3 cosine 2 theta. And I have lost, oh, because I didn't. Yeah, and if I wanted to, you know, if I wanted to reduce this, everything in here is divisible by 3. So I could do one more reduction here if I wanted to. I could actually divide everything by negative 3. Might even be smarter because look at all the negatives I've got in there. So this term would become, if I divide by negative 3, negative cosine of theta. And then this one would become positive sine 2 theta. And both of these would be positive. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Kind of a nice format to be in. Okay, so now I can figure out horizontal and vertical tangents. All right, I'm, again, I'm going to do some erasing. Otherwise, I will run out of room here. Luckily, that's the beauty of this YouTube stuff, right? You can go back and keep going back. I totally get it. I just wish I had more time to make these videos. I wish I had more time to make higher quality videos, but, you know, we're doing the best we can. I guess it's, you know, as good as the guy with the sheet of paper that I call the talking hand. <laughs> I think he does a good job. <laughs> this is a little bit more high tech than that even. Okay. So there we go. I think I've got that all written down. Now, if I want to find, let's find horizontal tangents first. And again, horizontal tangents are when your slope is equal to zero. Okay, so your e this fraction is equal to zero when its numerator is zero. So all I have to look out is, well, where is sine of 2 theta minus cosine of theta equal to zero? That is the question. Okay, now in order for me to solve this, okay, I've got to call upon my, oh, fabulous equation solving skills. Okay, I'm going to go back, and now I'm going backwards here, right? I'm going to use that double angle formula on this. Okay, because then I can factor out a cosine of theta. And what that does in my factors, I'll have a factor that just has cosines, and I will have a factor that just has the sine function in it. So it's going to be 2 sine of theta minus 1 is equal to 0 because then we set each factor equal to zero. Okay, so let's see, theta for cosine of theta would be at, where is it equal to zero? Pi over two and three pi over two. Now I'm just gonna answer these for one revolution. I think you all know how to write the general solutions. And over here, this would be sine of theta is equal to a half. And from 0 to 2 pi, everywhere sine of theta is equal to a half. Um, let's see, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Okay, now, the, I'm going to, you know, the one rule is they can't both be 0, right? So I have to wait and see if any of these angles pop up when I do the de denominator getting equal to 0. Okay, so we will store these for now. Okay, so let's just do horizontal. At, let's see, what do we have? Pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, pi over 6, and 5 pi over 6. Okay, so then I can erase. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with vertical tangents. Now, vertical tangents, you're looking for where your slope is undefined. Vertical lines have an undefined slope. 
this fraction would be undefined when the denominator is 0. So for vertical tangents, okay, we're going to set the denominator equal to 0. Now this one's not factorable. You know, this is this is a hard one to solve. Um, this is why you have to know your trig identities. I'm going to use the double angle formula for cosine. Now I'm thinking ahead about, you know, I want to be able to maybe factor it or something, so I'm going to use the one that has only sines in it. Uh, cosine of 2 theta, one of its 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Okay, I'm going to multiply everything through by negative 1. Negative one. <clears throat> I'm thinking that might be factorable. Um, let's see. I don't think it is, is it? We'll see. Two sine theta minus one, and then I'd have to have sine of theta minus one. I'd have to have a plus one, right? Hey, that works, doesn't it? If I haven't made a mistake here, I'm really, I don't think this is what I got the first time I did this problem. Um, let's see, I somehow got a three there, because I didn't reduce, oh, you know why? Because I didn't reduce the, um, this time I reduced it by dividing everything through by three, and I didn't do that in the previous one. Interesting. Okay, well, good to know. I think this is good. Okay, so we get sine of theta. If I set this factor equal to zero, I get sine of theta equals negative a half, or sine of theta is equal to one. And so where is theta equal to negative one half? Okay, seven pi over six, and 11 pi over six, that's on one revolution. And where is sine equal to one? Notice those are not over here, because I'm looking for, in case there's a place where they're both zero, that doesn't mean we have horizontal or vertical tangent there. Okay, and where sine is equal to 1 would be just at pi over 2. Now that is an interesting one. Okay. So we're going to have to take a look at that one. So that one's suspect. Okay, now what we can do here is look at the graph. And I'm just going to graph this. And you can go ahead and, you know, plug this in on your in polar form. And I told myself, Make sure you boot up the calculator. <laughs> I got the old lady memory going on. Um, I think I've still got the stuff from before. All right, let me move this into the field of vision a little bit more. Okay, there we go. That works great. Now I'm going to clear this guy out of there. Let's get rid of this. Let's clear it. Okay, we're going to put in there, our equation is 3 minus 3 sine theta. Oh, look at that. Here we go. Now I'm thinking about what's the biggest or smallest. I'm thinking about my window. Well, if sine was a negative 1, you'd have negative 3 times negative 1 is 3, so the biggest value here you could get for that would be a 6. So I'm going to make sure my window goes out to 6 in all directions. Okay. Okay, so I'm going, my theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. Um, let's step by pi divided by 12. I guess I could leave it pi divided by 1,000. If you're going to graph it and draw your graph, you need to change your increment to pi divided by 12. But my purpose here is I just want to take a look at what that looks like. Oh, it's not making me quit. Okay, let's do it. Now what's it doing? not following my directions. Don't go up with me. Am I just frozen here? I don't know. Okay, there we go. Yeah, weirdness. Okay, pi divided by 12. So if I want to graph it on my radial lines, I'd want to use multiples of pi over 12, which is about 0.262. All right, and x min, I'm going to go to negative 6 to 6, scaling by 1. 
negative 6 to 6 scaling by 1. Remember, now my graphics are going to be stretched horizontally. But when I hit graph, that's what it looks like. Okay, and let's square up the graphics. Okay, number 5z square. There we go. Um, the other thing I can do here is if I want to slow down how it was graphed, let's do pi divided by, let's do, I think we did a thousand. It did a really nice job. And you can see the direction that's it's traced out. Okay. So it starts there and then it goes in here. Now this would be at pi over two. And that's why you have a cusp there. And notice that was a zero on both of your, um, that was the suspect angle. It made both the numerator and the denominator equal to zero. So that's neither a horizontal nor a vertical tangent because your function is not differentiable there. So that's why it was on both lists. Um, look at the other places where you have horizontal. You should have one up here and one here and one down here. So there should be three other ones. And yep, I see the three angles, right? In your vertical tangents, you should have two. You should have one over here and one over here. So you can kind of see the picture fits with our um, what we found analytically, okay? All right, so notice again, this is where the cusp was, okay? And we had three other horizontal tangents and two vertical tangents. So we now know we want to toss this guy. Okay, because it made both of them zero. So that's really a great example of what does it mean sometimes when both dx d theta and dy d theta are zero. Look at your graph. Something something is amiss. Something's happening there. It's a very important point. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, now Here's um, a special little theorem. It's kind of kind of nice, but it says um, suppose when theta you have some angle alpha, and at that angle the graph passes through the pole. So that means the distance from the pole at alpha is zero. Remember, anytime your r value is zero, that means it's passing through the the pole, right? Well, what happens is that polar form that we just found becomes this. Okay, here's polar form for the derivative, right? We did the product rule on the, you know, product rule on the top and the product rule on the bottom. Okay, now what I've done here is I've put in the alpha. So instead of theta, I've put in all these alphas here. Okay. Okay, now remember, f at alpha, alpha is equal to zero. So everywhere we have f at alpha, that would be just those two. Okay, we're going to replace those with zeros, right? Well, if we do that, those two terms drop out. Okay, so there's, I'm replacing that with zero. Those two terms drop out now. Then I repeat the same step I did too. Oh my gosh. All right, so what happens is these two guys cancel, and so this is your ratio. Okay, and so it brings us to our next theorem. And by the way, these would cancel. F prime of alpha and F prime of alpha. And so you'd get sine over cosine, which is tangent of alpha. Dun, dun, dun. And so our next theorem is tangent lines at the pole. Oh, do you like that? Which brings us to our next theorem. If F of alpha is zero, okay, so your point is at the pole, your r value is zero, and f prime of alpha is not equal to zero, then the line theta equals alpha is tangent at the pole to the graph of r equals f at theta. All right, so for our last example, we're actually going to apply that theorem, tangent lines at the pole, and we're going to find the tangent lines at the pole for the graph. Okay, and we've got r equals 4 cosine 2 theta. All right, so first thing I need to do is I'm going to have to rewrite my um, polar equation, put it in parametric form. And so I'm going to have, remember, x equals r cosine theta, waiting for the stylus here, there we go. Okay, so x is equal to r, r is equal to 
4 cosine 2 theta. Okay, so x equals r cosine theta, and then y is equal to r sine of theta. Okay, and now I'm going to find the parametric, using that parametric form, we're going to find dy dx. Okay, so we're going to take dy d theta over dx d theta. Okay, so uh, let's start with dy d theta, that one. I'm going to think of that as those two factors being multiplied. So when I take the derivative, I'm going to apply the product rule. Okay, so as I, you know, that goes up in my numerator. So it's the derivative of the first, which would be 8 sine 2 theta times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, which would be cosine at theta. All right. Okay, I'm just double checking my work here because I don't trust myself as far as I can throw myself. <laughs> That's probably a good way to be. Let's see. Oh, because I think if when I took the derivative here, derivative of cosine is negative sine, right? I'm double checking. So negative 8 sine 2 theta. Okay, derivative of... That's the first times the derivative of the second. Okay, that's good. All right, now the next one, I'm going to do the same thing for the x. Okay, that, I'm going to think of that. x is that times that and use the product rule. So it would be negative 8 sine 2 theta. So that's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, and that one would be negative sine. Okay, I think I've got that right. Now I'm looking up there and I've got a bunch of negative signs. I've got um, fours all over the place. Um, maybe I should divide through by negative four. If I divide through by negative four, or multiply top and bottom by negative one-fourth, Because that factor is negative. Let's see, this one's negative, this one's negative. All those terms are negative, right? That'll change those to positives. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. There we go. All right, so what am I going to have? I'm going to have 2 sine 2 theta sine theta minus cosine 2 theta cosine theta over, okay, multiplying by negative one-fourth, I'd have two sine two theta cosine theta. And now if I multiply this negative times this negative, it's going to be a positive plus uh, cosine two theta times sine of theta. Okay, now I think I'm ready to go now. Um, tangent lines at the pole. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to this original equation. We know when it's at the pole, your values are zero. Okay. And so I'm going to have to find the locations at the pole. So let's see, inverse cosine, so 2 theta. Did we, I have a deja vu really bad here, <laughs> badly. Okay, let's see, 2 theta, where is cosine 0? Pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, and 7 pi over 2. I've got this poor little 2 down here, i gotta got to fix that. There we go, that looks a little better, okay. Now, um, then I multiply by half. Now, the reason, you know, this is where I'm, we're hitting zero. Now, the one thing the theorem says, your derivative can't also be zero, which is why I was taking this derivative here. Because now what I have to do is I have to go back, and these are the places where this is uh, f at zero, 
f of theta equals zero, I have to make sure f prime f theta is not also zero. Okay, that's one of the constraints in the theorem. So now I have to put these angles. I have to do this four times. <laughs> And um, I don't know, in the interest of time, I could just tell you that they all work. What a cop out, right? Um, but I'll go ahead and do it for you. This is the last thing we're doing anyway, so after this. If you don't want to listen and you don't want me to prove it to you that they all work, then okay, you can be done. But if you want to see that I'm going to test to make sure they all work, here's how you would test it. Now, of course, if you're doing this on a test, you have to test it. You have to show that, oh, yeah, the derivative isn't also zero. Because if it is, then that's not a, a tangent line at the pole. And because we're out of space, I have to write it again, which takes half a year. We're going to have to write it four more times with the angles inserted. OK, I think I've got it copied down right. I think we've got it. Okay, I'm double checking. I think that looks okay. Okay, so let's test these one by one. So first of all, let's start by testing pi over 4. So if theta equals pi over 4, we would have dy dx is equal to 2. Okay, now sine of 2 theta. 2 theta would be pi over 2. Sine there would be a 1. Sine at pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Okay, if I put pi over 4 in for the theta there, I get um, 2 times theta is pi over 2. Cosine at pi over 2 is 0. That's going to zero out that term, so I'm done with that one. Okay, and then again down on the bottom, it's 2 sine 2 theta, same thing. Cosine at theta, well, cosine at pi over 4 is also root 2 over 2 minus, okay, again, cosine at 2 theta, that's 0. So it zeroes out that term. So this ratio is equal to 1. OK, the derivative is not 0. So at pi over 4, we have a tangent at the pole. OK, so theta equals pi over 4 is one of our tangents at the pole. So that is one of them. OK, let's test the next one, 3 pi over 4. And you're going to see these calculations are very similar. Okay, 2. If I double 3 pi over 4, you get 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2. Uh, sine there is negative 1. Sine at 3 pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And cosine of you know, 3 pi over 2, that's 0. Again, that second term is zeroing out. That's nice. Okay, in the bottom, we'd have 2. Sine at 2 pi would be negative 1 again, and cosine at 3 pi over 4 would be negative root 2 over 2. And then cosine at 2 theta, 2 times, you know, that would still be a 0. That's going to 0 that out. Okay, this ratio is equal to negative 1. But I note it's not 0, so that's another tangent at the pole. Okay, in the interest of time, I will just tell you, if you do the same thing for 5 pi over 4, you will find that you have dy dx is equal to negative 1. And add, so that's that would be another one. That one checked out. And then at 7 pi over 4, you would find that your dy dx is equal to 1. So that one also checked out. Okay, so all four of these were legitimate tangents at the pole. Now if you look at your graph here, so let me just... I don't know why I had to shove that way back there, but hold on a second. There we go. Okay, so have a look at that graph. Let's clear out that out of there. And we have 4 cosine 2 theta. <clears throat> and I, it has to go out to 4, right? That's cosine of 2 theta. That's going to be a number somewhere between negative 1 and 1. So as long as my window is going out from negative um, 4 to 4, and I think my window is going negative 6 to 6, right? So I'm good to go. Okay, I'll just start graphing it. And what we're going to get here is a rose curve. And, you know, pi over 4 was right here. That's a radial line that's a tangent at the pole. So is 3 pi over 4. 
so is 5 pi over 4. And so is 7 pi over 4. Theta equals 7 pi over 4. Two of those are basically the same line. Uh, pi over 4 and 3 pi over 4 would be that radial line. Okay. I mean, if you go in there and put... Um, no, you can't. You have to do r equals. You can't do theta equals. But anyway, those would just have to be theta equals. All right. Those are where you have tangents at the pole. So it all checks out. Pretty cool. Aren't those rose curves pretty? All right. So that's it for the lessons of the calculus. You got to practice that stuff. Okay. Um, you got to know your way around a calculator. So anyway, I'll leave you to it. So thanks for your patience. It's a very long lesson all together, but we had a lot of background stuff I had to make sure you were um, sufficient with. So anyway, uh, until next time, take care, be safe, and we'll see you soon.